Hello engineers, in this video I will explain how you can share variables and parameters between your build and release pipelines on Azure DevOps. The first method which I will demonstrate is the variable groups. Variable groups is a way you can group a set of variables in order to reference them in build and release pipelines. This method also supports secrets. Variable groups can be found under library. When you are already in a project on Azure DevOps, you can go and navigate under library. Under first, you should go under pipelines and then you should select library. And then you will locate the, the variable groups. So let's go now and create our first variable group. I will call this variable group my vars. And I will go and press save on this variable group. In order to save to save your variable group, you should first add a variable. So I will go and create a new variable which I will call input name and the value of it will be my name. So as now I have my first variable created, I will go and press save and you will see that the, your first variable group will be created. In order to use this variable group from a build pipeline, you should go in pipeline permissions and select your needed pipeline. So in this case, I will select my existing pipeline, which is called test project. This is saved automatically. So I can go now and edit my pipeline in order to reference the variables that are located on this variable group. In order to do this, I must go and add a variables section on my YAML and reference the specific group name. I called this variable group my vars, so I will reference this name for the group of variables. If I save this pipeline, I will be able to print my variable that is located on the variable group. As you can see, I have already edited the task which will print the variable name. So if we go now and run this pipeline, we should see on the output that my name is printed. We will go and add the same reference on the release pipeline, but as the release pipelines have the GUI notation and not the YAML, we should go to edit our release pipeline and on the variable section, we should go and link our variable group. So as you can see, my variable group with the name my var appears and I want to link it in this release stage, the one that I only have. So now we can go and edit our partial script in order to print the value of this variable, which I have included in my library. We will go now and run this pipeline, which is named test project, to see the result. Normally, we should get the value that is located as input name also in the build and the release pipeline. We will wait for our job to be prepared on Azure as we use the predefined agents of Azure DevOps. As you can see, the variable of input name is correct and is referenced in our build pipeline. And we will now, now go and check also the release pipeline, which is triggered from the build pipeline. As you can see, the state currently is queued as we have enabled 
CI for this particular release stage. And if we check the logs, we should also see the name as the output. The parcel command is running and the output, as you can see, is my name that we gave as an input on our variable group. As a result, this is the first way you can reference variables between build and release pipe. Now I will demonstrate the second way to pass variables and parameters between build and release pipelines, which will be through a text file. In more detail, I will create a text file that contains the information that I want to pass from the build pipeline to the release pipeline. And I, I will upload this text file as an artifact. I will then download this artifact on the release pipeline and I will read the variable that I provided. Let's see how this is, this is implemented. I have already created the tasks for this particular procedure and you can see them below. So I ask for the user for an input parameter. This parameter is called project name, as you can see here, and it's a type of a string. So the user will provide the project name and then through a parcel task, I will go and store the input of the user in a, par in, in a variable, in a parcel variable called variable. This variable will have the input that the user provided through the build pipeline. As you can see, you should use the single quote notation here in order to get the variable value and store it into a parser variable. If you don't put the single quotes here, then the result will fade. The second line of this parcel gets this variable and print it, stores it in a file which is called project name.txt, a text file which is called project name. And the last line will just print the context of this project name file so that we can see from the build logs the parameter which we provided on the pipeline. The last step that we do on this build pipeline is to publish the build artifacts with a name drop. We will use this name to reference the artifacts that will be downloaded on this release pipeline. In conclusion, whichever input the user gives in the pipeline will be stored on a file named project name.txt and this will be provided on the release pipeline. Let's go now and see the release pipeline, which I have also prepared. Let's check the steps. So the first task of this release pipeline will be to download the build artifacts. So here we will provide the artifact name, which is drop, and we set that in the build pipeline. And we will leave the destination directory the with the default value. So we should go in the next jobs and get the contents of this system.artifacts directory folder on the build agent. So the, the last task that we will see here is the parcel script, which gets the value that the build pipeline created. So in this line of code, we create a parser variable named my value, which will get the content of this particular TXT file, which is named project name. This project name file is created on the build pipeline containing all the values that we want to provide. In, in your cases, you could also have other uh, file types like CSV or Excel and parse it ac accordingly with parcel commands. For the case of the simplicity, I use just a TXT file. 
I also print this variable on the release pipeline to verify the project name and to verify that the value that we provided is correctly printed. Lastly, you can set the value as a variable on your release pipeline so that to use it in other jobs in the same release pipeline. For example, if I add an archive job, for example, archive files, I could use the variable set with this command VSO task set variable. I could use this variable. I provide the name project name and set the value with my value. This is the value that will read through the project name.txt. As a result, I could go and get this value with, for example, this notation project check name dot zip. This would print the value that the user provided as input in the build pipeline. This task will fail if I run it because I don't have such a file in the artifact, artifacts staging directory. As a result, I will disable this task for now and I will go and print and I will go and run my pipeline, the build pipeline to verify the behavior. So we will go run the pipeline and we will provide a project name, for example, super project. And we will run this pipeline. We will go now and check the logs of this running job. And normally we should get the value super project both on the build pipeline and also the release pipeline. As you can see on this parcel task, we correctly get the super project input of the user. And if we go now on the release pipeline, which will be triggered from the CI that is available, you can see that the job is already queued. We should also see on the logs job that we have super project as an output from the parcel commands that we explained on the previous step. So we wait some seconds for the job to be completed and we will see that the file is parsed from the parcel script. You can see here that the file has been downloaded from the artifacts, the project name.txt and the printing is correct super project as it was in the build pipeline. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave a comment below, make a subscribe and press the like button.